Alrighty guys, welcome to my second tutorial on Python using Jupyter Notebook for data science. Wait a second, uh, I think that was a really long title. Uh, well, basically Python for data science guys. So I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're ready for my second tutorial right here. Uh, so if you guys remember, I hope you guys remember the first tutorial I taught you about NumPy, which is numerical Python. So and as I promised you, I'll be teaching you pandas, that is Python data analysis library. All right. So without wasting any further time, let's get rolling, guys. So the first and foremost function will be pd, oh, oh sorry, pd.series. And I'll be first, uh, I'll first just type the syntax and then I'll get into the details, guys. 112, and then let's run this. And there you go. So, so series right here is a function under the pandas library and just make sure that you always have S in capital guys. Anyway, so what this does is it stores all the values in a list, just like your list and tuples in Python, but there's a difference. This actually stores values in the form of column along with these indexes right here. So this is called indexing. It is done by default by Python. So if you don't know what indexing is, uh, if you if you check out my Python uh, series, I have explained what indexing is, but I'll just uh, briefly overview it if you don't know. Uh, it's nothing uh, too complicated. Each and every value that you store in a list is actually given an index. And the first value is always given an index zero and the second value is given one and so on. So the indexing is always n minus one the number of elements that you have so right here we have three elements so the indexing is uh, until two n minus one because it starts from zero pretty simple right all right so second thing right here we'll be talking about is data frame so ah oh, what's going on why am i getting spelling strong anyway so the python data frame is basically a function to create uh, a table of values so you might be asking me that this itself looks like a table so why do I need another table so this looks like a table but it actually doesn't have a column header or it doesn't have multiple columns and it doesn't look really aesthetic right so you can get all these things in data frame so whenever you use the data frame function you can actually create column headings you can put in the list of values on it right and you can create multiple columns and you can essentially create a spreadsheet of values all right so since we're data analysts and you're going to be learning how to do data analysis you need to first learn how to create a table all right so that's what data frame is all right so what table should we create guys so let's see uh all right I think I have an idea. Let's go and create a table for tuna salad. I'll be having one column for ingredients and another column for the quantity of ingredients. All right. So first thing that I've done here is I've actually created a column header. All right. The one that comes under the curly brackets is the column header and it ends with a colon. And then after the colon, you open a square bracket and inside you just put in the values exactly pretty much the same as you do in a series. So, all right, so what kind of an ingredient does a tuna salad require? Let's see, uh, some celery, I guess, uh, lemon juice, uh, why not? And uh, yeah, I forgot. And then, well, all salads have some black pepper, so let's put in some black pepper. And how, oh, right, why am I forgetting this? Don't forget to put these quotation mark guys and then what else of course it's a tuna salad right so tuna is required of course and then put in a comma and then now you can put in the second column header which is going to be quantity and then another semi another colon not semicolon and then square bracket and let's put in the quantity let's say i have i want half cup of celery all right, guys, if you really want to make a tuna salad, this is not the ingredient list, or maybe it is, I don't know. I'm just randomly putting in whatever comes to my mind. So don't follow this. This is not a tuna salad tutorial. Anyway, so one spoon lemon juice, one spoon black pepper, 
and I again got the spelling wrong. What's going on with me today? And and one ounce of tuna. Why not, guys? Let's have one ounce, and then I hope I did not make any syntax error. Let's run this, and there you go. Now this is what I call a table, right? So you have some column headers. You have some gray and white action going on. This looks like a very, very good table. So if you want to add more columns, you just have to put another comma and then again add another column header along with a colon and then the list of values that come under it. So pretty freaking simple, right? All right. So as you can see, you also have the indexing. So the indexing will not leave you. It'll always be there with you. You cannot avoid it anyway. So now that we've seen how to create a table of values, let's actually do some basic uh, 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 let's uh, let's apply some basic function on the data frame before we apply or manipulate or add any values to the data frame we need to save it in a variable all right so let's save it in a variable tuna underscore salad equal to so what this essentially does is it has stored this data frame and this variable so tuna underscore salad it's now a data frame all right so now you can call tuna underscore salad and then do all the different kind of operations to the table all right so the first one which i'll be talking about is dot shape function so as you can see dot shape it essentially gives you the shape of your data frame so the first one is your row it has four rows and the second one is your column it has two columns so that's what it's done here it's giving you the shape so when you have really really big data sets yeah this will be a really good useful function which uh, lets you know how big your data set is pretty awesome right uh, let's do another function so there are actually a lot of functions here you can use here I'm just giving you some basic ones we'll be learning more as the time comes so this is uh, short for information it actually gives you information on how many null values you have in your table so null values if you don't know they are just basically missing values in your data so it just lets you know how many missing values you have we currently don't have any missing values so it has given it hasn't mentioned any one missing value but if you have a really big table and you want to know uh, uh, how many missing values you have before you start analysis uh, start your data analysis this is a great tool for it all right so now that we've actually created a data frame seen some basic functions uh, let's actually go ahead and work with a big data set all right so we can really can uh add a data frame pro, uh, function and add all these values and create a big data set but it'll take me forever so let's import a data set uh, from an excel file all right so importing data set from excel files is not really that difficult it's a very easy function all you have to do is just before that let's uh, create a variable and store it there don't forget guys always create a variable and store whatever you're loading into that variable all right it's very important so once you've done that now you can actually read excel files all right so i already know the name of the excel file i want to import so i'll be doing just that and dot xlsx so always make sure you know what the extension of your excel file is there are a lot of extra extensions in excel files minus xlsx and that's what I've done. So it's got loaded, and then uh, you do really don't have to use the print function always here, guys. You can just type ABC and run it, and wow. So what I've basically done here is I have loaded the Excel sheet from my system. All right. So this is a pretty big Excel sheet that I've loaded. So uh, as you can see, this thing that I've typed here is actually the name of the Excel sheet and this is the extension, all right? So in my system, uh, all the Excel sheets in my desktop are directly imported into the Jupyter Notebook, so I really don't have to give the location information. But whenever you are importing Excel sheets, always make sure that you also include the location information. And by that, I mean the destination location that you get uh, uh, in the properties section of your file. I'll be putting the syntax for it in the screen for you guys to check it out. All right, so now that we've imported Excel sheet, I'll just uh, briefly show you how the Excel sheet looks. So this is my Excel sheet that is stored, that is saved in my PC. And the name of the Excel sheet is FCS 
list three whatever and that's what i've basically imported in my jupyter notebook all right so now that i've imported it let's do the same functions again abc.shape and let's run this and now since there's a big data set i cannot just keep counting the number of rows and columns and shape function really helps me do that i can also do abc.info remember guys whenever you uh, use the info function you need the round brackets not for shape function run this and it actually gives me the number of null objects for each and every column and as you can see there are a lot of null values so that's a very very useful information for me so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh, we are almost big, uh, starting the process uh, of what a data analyst does in day-to-day -day life in fact you could say that we've already done some basic data analysis so uh, i guess you could call yourself a data analyst a beginner data analyst now so uh, i'll meet you in the next video i hope you enjoy enjoying my tutorial series uh, i'd like your feedback so please comment down below subscribe and like my videos it motivates me to make more videos see you in the next video guys goodbye